Hey guys, Crystal Das here. I uh, wanted to bring you guys a little tutorial video on how I personally play Karax. Um, I can almost, in fact I'm pretty certain I can solo this map with uh, Karax. Uh, so I wanted to share with you exactly how I play this map with him. I am level 90 mastery and I have my mastery points set on structure, health, chrono wave energy regeneration and initial energy i have all of the points in there i think that's the best option for this build uh so let's go ahead and see how this goes uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to build up to 15 supply worth of probes then build a pylon at 17 probes building i'll build a forge here and then once 21 probes are in production, I'll send a probe to my expansion to fast expand. So let's watch me do that. I'll get into my player perspective for you. I'm getting ready to build a pylon. I don't want to send a probe out too early. So that after Fancy I get 15... You here. Guess it's my lucky day. Dominions hired me to destroy some trains carrying dangerous Mobius ordnance. Seeing as how Amon's a mutual enemy, Maybe you'd like to step up to the plate. I could use a partner or two on this. Chrono Boost Online. Our structure should now operate at a greater efficiency. So you'll see I'm almost here at uh, 17 supply. I'm getting ready to build a forge. There we go. Now my next task is to get 21 supply worth of probes in production and then send one probe out to my expansion. Look at what my ally is doing. And then after I send the probe out, I'll make 22 supply worth of probes. Because I want 21 harvesting plus 1 to use for building stuff. Macro. So, looking at my ally, he's going Vespine first instead of Expand. That's fine. Now, what I do here, I build a pylon here, a cannon here, and a cannon here. Then I set my two cannons to attack this rock, this rock, and then this rock. And then I'll move my attention back down to my base for a little bit. Uh, my ally does end up helping clear my rocks, which I didn't need help with. But uh, in the event that my ally did not help, my rocks would be done far earlier than I need to have the money to expand. So let's go ahead and uh, watch this. Now, I didn't need my ally to attack here, but he does anyway. Kudos. Didn't need it, but I'll take the help. Alright, so now there's a choice that you have as Karax. You can either save up your money and build your nexus as soon as the rocks are done or you can make your vespine geysers and sa and fully saturate them right off the bat you don't have enough money to do both you're gonna have to delay one or the other a little bit to get one of them out faster so i always like having i always choose the vespine right now because i like being able to start my upgrades pretty quickly but there is the choice of doing either and if you like having less gas more cannons uh go nexus first if you like having more gas more monoliths and less minerals uh go vespine first i personally am a monolith heavy build late game so i like having as much gas as early as possible so i will go vespine geysers before nexus while still being able to get my nexus out before the five minute mark so let's go ahead and watch I will now use my probe to make the two Vespine geysers and then start fully saturating them as quick as possible. And because I delayed uh, some stuff a little bit, uh, I need to get my gateway out if I want to start teching up. So I build three probes to the top Vespine geyser, then I build my gateway, and then I build three probes for the bottom geyser. So you'll see me do that right now. So this is me starting to tech up. I'm, I'm delaying tech a little bit to get my Nexus out a little bit quicker because I went best being first. So I'm delaying quite a bit of stuff here. And that's fine. It works. You just got to know what's coming and when it's coming to do this. So switch over to the bottom assimilator. Three more probes and we're good. Now, Nexus next. 
Now the thing about this, uh, the first attack wave is going to be coming from over here, over in this direction pretty darn quickly, and I never... I'm not, I'm not saying I don't have reliable allies, but I will never trust my ally to take care of uh, all the waves, because they do sometimes leave you high and dry. And so what I want to do is I want to build the Nexus, and then I'm going to immediately come out here and build a pylon with two cannons, so I have vision, detection, range, and the ability to spam a couple orbitals. So Nexus, pylon, cannon, cannon next. And that's after full saturation of my main. So I'm only teched up to Gateway, and I'm going to go ahead and start getting a little bit of defense and my Expo going. So switch back into my perspective, start. Mm -hmm. Notice my circling ally was a little bit uh, not attacking his rocks, so pinged him, didn't notice, that's okay. His gas, not mine. <laughs> Now basically what I want to talk to you guys about is my goal for uh, pylon cannon placement. I build my clusters of cannons here and here, and this serves two purposes. Uh, the first purpose is to attack the trains that come by on the tracks, and it'll have a uh, vision of both, and the second purpose is to get the waves which come from here and here. And having these clusters placed at the bottom of the ramps serves both purposes, so you're knocking two birds out with one stone. And in brutal difficulty, you need to be able to have multiple purposes for things if you're doing strategies like structure care acts. Get the most value out of what you're placing, and I think I accomplished that pretty good here. Some people decide to do their builds right here and work towards there, but that doesn't help with the bonus objective or the waves coming from over here. I used the same amount of money and accomplished the same with far less danger to myself, and I think that's subjectively a better idea. So, uh, back to player perspective. Here we go. The swarm prevails. Now I'm going to get my uh, simulators the going. The enemy has mobilized. We should move to intercept. rally my probe back over here. Now, what I start doing now is I w start watching for the first wave. I'm going to be very careful about not wasting my energy. I know a lot of Karax players will just spam their orbitals until they're out of energy. You don't want to do that, especially if you can't trust your ally. You want to make every shot count. Try to kill all the enemies with two or three shots. These cannons will uh, basically prevent the enemy from running up your ramps because they'll be aggroed onto the cannons and that'll make them run straight up this way into your uh, defenses and uh, then you can just strike here, strike here, strike here and it'll kill them all. It's great. Just pew pew pew. Kills them every time. Unless you have a Vorazun ally who cloaks your stuff then they'll ignore your defenses and go up your ramp and then you can rage quit but I digress. Back to the game. Player perspective, play. Three hits. Perfect. Now I start immediate probe production onto my uh, minerals at my expansion, and I do not stop until my expansion is fully saturated. I will chrono the moment my nexus is done. And the train should be coming in just a second, but I ignore that for the moment, and I fully saturate, because that First is most important. Your so. objective is to destroy it before it escapes. Its current trajectory indicates it is attempting to flee. We will need to move quickly. Switch over my rallies to the assimilators. Okay, we're good. Alright, my next goal here is to get defenses up here, one pylon and two cannons, because when this train gets to right about here, an enemy wave will start spawning down here and come towards me. So I want to have 
a pylon and two cannons here ready to defend so I get vision, range, orbital strike ability, etc. I also want to build a cybernetics core here. <coughs> Sorry. And then I get my vision back over here as soon as possible to use my solar lance to take out as many enemies and as much damage on the train as I can possibly inflict. So I have to do all these th things in rapid succession. Two cannons, cyber core, orbital strike on the first train. If I get all that done, the train will die from the two cannons and my ally, and this wave will be uh, aggroed onto these cannons, and I can orbital strike it pretty quick. So that's my immediate goal right now. Build the cannon, move that guy up there, switch over here, orbital strike. Switch my view back over, cyber core. They are moving swiftly. Get a second gateway out because why not? Objective has been destroyed. Get my second cannon well before done, the wave warriors. gets here. Well done indeed. Move the probe away because you don't want the enemy aggroing onto it. A little overkill there, but that's okay. So now my goal here. I'm fully saturated and I've got my tech going. I've got my cyber core up and two gateways is all I need this game. I take my Chronos, uh, Nexus, my Nexus is Chrono Boost, and I put them on my uh, Solar Forge and my Regular Forge, and I leave them there for a good part of the game. Uh, once the Solar Forge upgrades are mostly done, I will usually give my ally the second one, and in this game I'll be putting it on his Baneling Nest, but I'll leave the main one on the Forge for most of the game until my, three, three, until my level 3 shields are done, so... Uh, after my level 3 shields are done, I'll usually put this back on the Solar Forge, because why not? So, <laughs> so that's my goal here now. Um, as soon as the Cyber Core is done, I'm going to be getting my uh, Twilight Council, and then I'm going to start working on this little star cluster here, because the next train is on the bottom track, so I will show you that. Get your a gateway upgrade as soon as possible. Twilight Council. And telling my ally to go defend because I'm against Banelings and they can wreck me, but my ally's not listening, so I'm going to have to take care of it myself. Which was unfortunately the theme this upgrade game. Complete. And I'm going to use my... Uh, uh, pure fire beam to take care of that hill down there because I want to build there later and my allies rarely ever clear it for me so use it while you got it. The cooldown if you use it right at the start Looks like is, the research is done. just enough that it'll be ready to use again on the double train if you use it right when it starts. Uh, so I always use that first one immediately to clear whatever I can on this hill. If this clear here, hill is already cleared, I'll send it over this direction and just kill whatever. I just want to use it as quickly as possible. 90% of games, my ally will not have cleared this hill, so that's my goal with the uh, Purifier Beam. I don't like sending a probe up there to clear it, but getting it clear is very important for what I'm planning later. So, um, so yeah, we're going to start working on this now. So. Incoming train. Do whatever it takes to derail it. Don't think we can warp in there. Now, this is the only upgrade from the Twilight Council I get. It increases the energy regeneration rate of energizers in shield batteries by 200%. That is an absolute necessity because I use energizers at every single cluster of my cannons. It just is great. It, it makes them fire faster and that's more DPS. I never get the third and final upgrade for the Solar Forge. I've never needed it. You have to build either a Stargate and a Robo and then the additional structure. and That's just... That's just money that I could be using on more defenses, and I don't need a slightly quicker energy pool for that much money, so I always stick with just the level 2. 
I get the level 1 and the level 2, and that is enough for me for almost any game. These are the only six uh, tech structures I make, all games. So, uh, let's go back to the game. Now, I'm going to start working on the bonus Upgrade. train. Looks like thing. that research is done. I'm telling my ally to attack so I can solar lance, and, but this cigar is very shy this game, so... Just doesn't seem to want to attack without being near my cannons for protection, so yay. I am activating Chrono Boost now. That should greatly increase the height of the boss structure. Ding! Research complete. Looking for the Vipers to solar uh, strike them, so there it is. Looking at what my allies doing. Main objective destroyed. Not much. Confirmed. We've delivered a death strike. The enemy has sent an attack against us. Get as much going here as I can, and then I'm going to switch my attention back over to the wave. Because I cannot let these banelings hit, so... Viper's like, nope, I'm out of there. <laughs> so this is the formation I like doing up here. It works pretty well, it leaves you room for two energizers on the side, and then later on I'll surround it with Kader and Monoliths. And that takes care of pretty much any enemy and all the trains, and it's pretty good. I like it. Looks like they've got another shipment leaving the station. Let's cause some delays. Making sure my upgrades are still going. And... For some reason, my ally decided it would be a good idea to attack this base area and lose all of his army. I don't know why, uh, but sometimes you just have allies like that, so. <laughs> Our allies are under attack. Our allies are under attack. are under attack got a train on that bottom track moving fast must be a priority shipment intercept it if you can all right so when this wave when this train gets to my defenses i'm going to try to use my solar lance to take out any uh enemies that get here this defensive cluster is done uh, this is enough to take care of any train on any difficulty the bonus trains i uh, get a pylon right here Build four cannons around it, four monoliths clustered right next to it, and I have enough extra room for one cannon and a shield battery which can reach everything but this monolith. So, uh, this energizer can uh, hit everything but this far cannon, and this is enough to take care of all the bonus trains, and that's all I leave there. This is also great for killing enemies that come from the side. These uh, monoliths can, are in range of a lot of the stuff that comes from that, so I'm hitting the bonus trains as well as the bottom trains on the bottom track, as well as the right side attack wave. So this cluster serves all three of those purposes. So uh, almost, I'm about halfway done with this cluster of cannons. I'm a little bit more than halfway done with this cluster of cannons. I'm gonna build a monolith here, 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 and here, and we'll call it done. You'll notice that the energizers are energizing all of these photon cannons. Uh, and they're making them do a heck of a lot more damage. So uh, when you use the Solar Lance on this uh, second train, you want to keep a lookout for the enemies that can damage your cannons the most. On this wave, that is the Banelings and the Vipers. Banelings can uh, really hurt if they come in large clusters. Swarm Hosts do a lot more damage than they should, and Vipers can... Uh, well, they can binding cloud you, which really sucks. So you want to orbital strike after your solar lance any of the problem enemies. So that's the next goal here. Our allies are under attack. My 
Now, one thing to keep in mind, this is enough to take the train down a little bit past half health. If you want to take it all the way down, you can with orbital strikes. You always have enough energy at this point. Uh, I chose not to this time because I wanted my ally to come back over and actually participate. I had a feeling that my ally thought I was trying to carry and do everything myself, so I purposely let this train pass to get my ally to pay attention a little bit more to the important objective. So. Uh, that's what's going on here. Our allies are under attack. Our allies are under attack. Our foe is making their move. We must be ready. Main objective escaping. Our allies are under attack. Our Our main objective attack. has been destroyed. Yes. Trains are leaving both stations at once. I guess they're trying to stay on schedule. Now, I do two additional things on this map. Uh, this cluster is completely done, so if any of you want to copy that design, that's what it looks like there. Uh, you have enough room for all of them. I follow almost the same design down here, but there's not enough room for all six uh, monoliths, so I usually put uh, four, one here, one here, one here, and one here. And that, coupled with these guys, is enough to take care of most anything. So uh, the two additional things that I do... After this uh, double train, there's going to be attack wave coming from the upper left here. I like to build a small little defensive fortification right here with a few monoliths and cannons, uh, just to give me that range and vision and detection in this area. Uh, this is an area where a lot of uh, stuff comes through, and if you get cloaked stuff, they can sneak up here and come up the ramp, and I don't like that, so I'm going to build a little bit of defense there. After this is done, and this is done, and this is done. Then I move on to this hill and start just covering it with a monolith. So uh, right now the immediate goal is to get this cluster finished up. So let's go ahead and put it back in my perspective. Our allies are under attack. Our allies are under attack. Our base is under attack. Upgrade complete. Our allies are under attack. Take care of those bailings. Now, at this point, uh, the enemies are what I have to be careful of, not the trains. My cannons can almost my cannons can take care of the trains at this point. There is enough DPS here to deal with all the trains as long as the enemies are dealt with. At this point on this first double train, I will use a solar lance on the top wave of enemies, and then my purifier beam, which I told you that I used at the very first time when it was off of cooldown, will be coming off of cooldown right here, right now, when the train gets to about here. So I'll use the solar lance on the top train to take care of the problematic enemies, and then I'll pop the purifier beam right here, go in and take care of all of the enemies on the bottom train. So you'll see me do that right now. That takes care of the threat of the enemies. My cannons can deal with the rest, so. Our allies are under attack. Good job torching those trains. From the intel I've been provided, I'd say half their stock is All right, cannons can do the rest. 
Now I build my little defensive fortification here. Our Same layout attack. every time. Our allies are under attack. Main objective destroyed. We have done well, my children. I'll build a monolith with a cannon, two batteries, and another monolith, an energizer right tucked in behind them. And that's all you need. An enemy force is en route to our position. Now you'll notice that uh, that enemy wave is coming like I told you about. It's a good thing I have those defenses up there, so it gives me vision to uh, gives me vision to uh, attack the enemies, which is nice. My ally's not really here to help out, so it's up to me. Don't care about scourges in the slightest, so. And this is the same structure formation Heads I use up. every time, Another so... Trains in transit. Um, I'm gonna pause for just a sec to show you guys something. Um, when you get to a little bit before the point where I made this, <coughs> if you're facing Terran on Brutal, this formation doesn't work as well, because Terran Ghosts will be coming and they'll nuke. They come from here, here, here and here so I need to put four extra pylons or sorry four extra cannons before I build these monoliths here that does delay things a bit but what I want to do is versus Terran put a cannon right here that way the ghost can be detected because as it stands now these cannons are too far back and the ghosts will aggro onto this right here if they're coming they'll stand right about here cannons can't see them from that far so you need to have detection out here so what I'll do versus Terran I'll put an extra cannon here an extra cannon here an extra cannon here and an extra cannon here that's 600 extra minerals which is why it delays these 600 minerals worth of monoliths but it gives you the detection and takes care of all the ghosts that will try to nuke you so you'll be hearing a lot of nukes on Brutal versus Terran those four cannons will stop all of them. It looks a little bit messy. I like my design structures to look nice like this, but you got to do what you got to do. So, cannon here, cannon here, cannon here, and cannon here. And that will stop every single ghost from nuking you. And that's all you have to invest. So, uh, let's get this party going back again. I don't like that battle net connection being lost, but oh well. I well, just kind of chill in between my cannon clusters. I'm wondering why. But that's okay. I guess I'll do all the work. Now, the great thing about these monoliths up here. great thing about these monoliths right here is they give you vision of this train you can blast any problematic enemies before they even come over here if you're facing a sky enemy you'll have to use a few orbitals here like against battle cruisers or liberators or things like that uh, tempests especially uh, you'll need to blast them before because they can tear down these defenses pretty quickly but all you have to do is focus on the problematic enemies uh, take them out Banshees, Liberators, Battle Cruisers, Carriers, and Tempests are the main ones. Broodlords, not so much an issue. Uh, just use your Solar Lance on this train and get back to building. So, uh, hope you guys enjoy the little structure I have going here. Activating Chrono Boost now. That should greatly increase the output of our structures. Our base is under attack! Our allies are under attack. Main objective destroyed. There is no escape from this swarm. Our allies are under attack. Alright, 
after the sixth train, which was uh, this one, uh, you'll see on your objective list six out of nine, then the big, big wave comes from over here. And this is a wave where on Brutal, you really need your ally to come and help you out with uh, if you're Karax or somebody else sometimes, because this wave can be a real bugger. It's one of the bigger ones. So um, unfortunately, I don't get any help this time, so I do lose a couple things, but that's what you got to worry about after this train coming through here. At this point, I don't need any help with the bottom trains at all, so I usually will tell my ally, go ahead and guard the top, because that's got a little bit less DPS than the uh, bottom trains. For the bottom, I've got one, two, three clusters of cannons all shooting. For the top, I only have one and a half, so uh, you should tell my ally, just go guard the top at this point. Our allies are under attack. It appears the enemy is advancing. Prepare to meet them in combat. Ally valiantly ignoring my pings. Yeah, that hurt. That hurt. <laughs> Our allies are under attack. I'm gonna go fix up my bonus uh, train structure. I usually don't like like losing those, uh, but what are you gonna do? So. Our allies are under attack. Our allies are under attack. My ally surprisingly attacked the train that I was hoping he'd attack, so kudos to him. Now at this point I'm pretty much done building defenses. I have a couple choices at this point. I can uh, build a bunch of monoliths on this island and just cover the whole darn thing in monoliths. It helps my DPS versus the remaining trains. Or I can build some energizers for my ally if they have an appropriate army that can utilize them. Zagara is not one of those commanders, but uh, if I do have an ally that could use energizers, I'll build about four more gateways at this point and switch them over into warp gates and just start spamming energizers for my ally because I'm going to have the minerals will be used for the gateways, the gas will be used for the energizers, and I can seriously make them a force to be reckoned with. My ally does not need them at this point, so I'm going to finish covering this island with monoliths instead. So that's my goal here. Our allies are under attack. Those trains on the third rail are fast as hell. Gotta take them out quick. Our allies Our are under, is attack. under attack. Our allies are under attack. Our base is under attack. A main objective has been destroyed. We have contained the target successfully. Our base is under attack. Our base is under attack. The main objective has been destroyed. As expected. Now, one of the things that I uh, really focused on this build was uh, maximizing my energizer potential. Uh, I use very few energizers throughout this whole game. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And those nine energizers are within range of every single cannon and monolith that I build. Uh, these are the positions that I like, that I've chosen. I can probably knock it down to... I don't think I can knock it down to eight. I've pretty meticulously gone over this, so uh, I think that's about the best I could do. It really saves on gas, not having to build a whole lot of those, but I think that's a pretty good placement for them. So for those wondering, uh, here's two of them in my main cluster two more in my other main cluster, one over in the side cluster here, one in the bonus train train cluster, 
and three on my little island. One for these guys. This one covers all of these guys. And this one covers all of these guys. So with those nine energizers, I can cover pretty much every single thing that I build and get extra damage out of all of them. So uh, that's one of the things that I like about this build and this placement of units and structures and uh, energizers. They cover everything. Everything works together. So uh, let's get back to it. Completed. Now they did fix this last wave that's coming from here right now. Uh, this wave is freaking huge. But I don't care if it kills half of my stuff because this wave will just come and die to the rest of my other stuff. All I really want to focus on is this last train here. Uh, unless you miss a train, that's a different story. But I want to cover this island with as much DPS as possible, and that means monoliths, because the faster I kill this train, the faster we win. So I'll use up a little energy on this uh, wave here, but for the most part, I want to save it for this last train. So back to the end game. To attack our base. My ally valiantly this. ignoring me again. On the exact opposite side of the map. I'm sorry, I got a little bit irked this game at my ally. Got every single pain link before they hit. You know, in my ally's defense, this was the... Our allies are under attack. This was the composition that hard counters Zagara, so... I understand hesitation a little bit. But aberrations, man, aberrations. Real empty right they go, they're good Not versus this combo. To go. <laughs> and my purifier beam will be ready to go, so I'm going to go ahead and just take out as many banelings as I can. Our allies are under attack. And at this point, I have a full 290 energy without even having that third upgrade for my Solar Forge, so I just start pew-pewing the crap out of this last train, so let's watch the end game. Deal. Been a pleasure working. So yeah, just a little bit of mana strikes there at the end for the enemy. Uh, so yeah, that's how I play Karax on Oblivion Express. That works against any composition, any enemy, and on most mutations. Uh, I really like that build. I think it's a good build. If you guys have any suggestions or strategies you'd like to share that I could improve this build with, that'd be great. But I honestly don't know if there's a better way to do structure Carex on this map. It works pretty darn well. And just going to let you know, I don't usually lose those uh, structures on the bonus train little area there. It's just I was facing Bailings and those hard counter Carex. So uh, for the most part, I never lose any buildings whatsoever. So um, I hope this video helped you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, if there's any suggestions you have, please give me a post or let me know. I'd love to hear your suggestions and your thoughts. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started on my little Zagara video next. So uh, you guys take care, and I'll see you someday. Bye.